So, Father, I just thank you, God, for the word that you have sown in my heart tonight, God. And, Father, I pray that you let me bring it forth, God, as the pen of a ready writer. And God, that you would reveal the secrets of heaven to us, that you would place upon each of us, Lord, the, the, the mantle and anointing that is needed for the day that we're in. And God, that you would prevail, Father, in a powerful and mighty way. Lord, give me words to speak and give us all ears to hear and a heart to receive. And Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. I want to talk to you tonight, and by the way, the notes that some of you may have and the notes that you were going to use, Daniel, just forget those because I'm not even planning on going there. I am going to talk to you tonight about what is required to build the kingdom of God in the state of Florida. Building the kingdom of God in the state of Florida is not for the faint of heart. Most people will drop out because they like the usual thing. They like to have the usual thing going on. And when you come into Florida, I tell new people that come here all the time and those of you that are new to Florida... You've never been in warfare till you've come to Florida. So totally different warfare. Those of you that are born and raised here, you probably wouldn't know that or see that because you just grew up in it. But those that come from another region realize that when they get here, there's another level of warfare that they've never experienced. And many times, if you don't have the fortitude, you will fall by the wayside or you'll pack your bags and go somewhere else. I tell people all the time, when you move to Florida, if you're going to do the work of the Lord, you better have an an, an intercessory team to come along with you to help beat those devils off as you begin doing the work of ministry. So tonight I'm going to talk to you about the bulldozer anointing. Because it's the bulldozer anointing that is required to do what God wants to do in Florida. We're not talking about a mamby-pamby anointing. Our anointing that makes you feel good or the anointing that makes you feel like you're fulfilling somebody's destiny or your destiny. You're actually fulfilling God's destiny when you have a bulldozer anointing. I was prophesied several years ago. Cheryl was too. And it was back before we ever met Dutch Sheets. And a friend of mine in Lakeland, he invited Cheryl and I to come to hear a prophet by the name of Glenn Miller. Never heard many prophets before I wanted to get around prophets I love have always loved the realm of the prophetic it's misunderstood in a lot of regions and territories just like the bulldozer anointing is misunderstood and at the end of the his preaching he called us up and he began prophesying to me that you have a bulldozer anointing and he said you put it in low and you let it go And woe be to what's in front of you. And then he started prophesying to Cheryl. And he said, you have a dynamite anointing. And if the bulldozer can't move it, the dynamite will. I had not thought about this until tonight because I've been very stirred today. And actually this stirring started... Uh, a little over a week ago now when Merton Clark, Bishop Merton Clark from uh, Palm Bay uh, pulled something out of me or awakened something in me that I had allowed to die. Another thing I had allowed to die, and I saw it tonight very clearly because I had planned to preach another word, was the bulldozer anointing that God has placed upon the inside of me. I've allowed the bulldozer to get into idle and just sit there in idle waiting on everybody to tell me which way to go but with a bulldozer knowing and you cannot let people tell you which way to go or how to do things or what you should do because it's an anointing that prepares the way most people are not prepared for a bulldozer anointing because a bulldozer anointing moves things it shifts things it changes things And so many people will misunderstand that and you're up on your bulldozer and you're going and you're plowing away. This is the same for, this is the forerunner anointing. You're plowing away and somebody comes up beside you and said, hey, hey, could you get off your bulldozer for a minute? I need to talk to you. I think you should do this. No. And that's what Nehemiah, who had a bulldozer anointing to rebuild, told Sambal and Tobiah. 
I will not, I will not come down off the wall of building an apostolic center here, of building the house of the Lord in the state of Florida for you or anyone else. I am not going to be your pastor. I never will be your pastor. That is not my gifting. My gifting is that of an apostolic minister. And I'm called to prepare the way. I am a forerunner. I don't take hostages. I don't put you in hospitals. I don't baby you or tend to you or change your diapers. I don't do those things. The only love inside of me that I have is that which is a spiritual father. I don't have a loving side as of an apostle. Because that side is preparing a way. It has work to do. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we'll get a lot of amens tonight out of this message, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, could you get down off your bulldozer? I think we should be doing this. No, we're preparing a way. I, I, I think we need to <clears throat> become like the other churches in the area. No, we're preparing a way. We're doing something that's never been done before in the state of Florida. We're not going the church route. We're not going to do the church thing. We're not going to be traditional. We're not going the traditional route. We're preparing a way. And preparing that way is you're going to have to put your nose to the plow. And you can't look back because Jesus said that once a worker of the kingdom puts his hand to the plow, he can't look back. Because if he does, he's not fit for the kingdom. And the reason you can't look back when your hand goes to the plow is because of the fact you cannot plow a straight row looking backwards. You can't move the stumps looking backwards. You can't move that which needs to be moved out of the way. So people who start with you when you're up on the bulldozer usually don't end with you because they're not used to the bulldozer anointing that moves things out of the way. Now, the bulldozer anointing doesn't want to move people out of the way. It wants to move demonic structures so that God can come in. We're going to read this here in a few minutes in the Scripture. The thing is that sometimes people are tied to those demonic structures. And they love those demonic structures. There are people who literally love their pity parties. They're attached to it. They have no intention of walking away from their pity party. You can counsel them from now until Jesus comes back and they won't change one iota. Because they have a hold of the devil. The devil don't have a hold of them. I will. Got all this rejection stuff in our life. We begin manifesting rejection. Put the, put the bulldozer in low. Get out of the way spirit. Hopefully that person will let go of that rejection spirit. You see, when you have a rejection spirit, you can't baby that spirit. You can't have pity for that spirit. You have to cast that spirit out. Say, cast it out. Look at somebody and say, I'm casting out demons. And whatever's holding on to them is going to. So, there, therefore, because mis the bulldozer anointing is misunderstood, many will start with you, but they won't end with you. Because you're preparing a way. You're not touching people's feelings. You're not making them feel good. I want you to look in Malachi with me. Chapter 3 and verse 1. Now here's the Lord. He's talking about, through the prophet, he's talking about the bulldozer anointing. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he will clear the way before me. One of the things we're doing here on the Space Coast is we're clearing out a hundred years uh, of, of junk that's been on the foundation that God is removing from the foundation right now. And boy, am I misunderstood big time by people here and people outside of here. Has a misunderstanding of what we're called to do in raising up 
being a messenger that prepares the way of the Lord. Say, prepare the way of the Lord. It's what the bulldozer anointing does. Now, just continue to read, though. He said, I'm going to send my messenger. He will clear the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will what? Suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. So what we've been doing here in Florida, Cheryl and I have been doing for the last 20 years is forerunning in this state. We've been preparing a way. We've been digging down deep, building a road deep down in this state. We're getting ready to build one over in Daytona Beach. I've not ever done much there, but we're getting ready to go in there and bust that place wide open. I had a dream several years ago back in 2014, interesting dream. And I, I, I so love the dream realm that we're in right now. In this dream, Cheryl and I were, we were going through a three-story house, our house. And we were given approval to the angel that was in front of us who had the blueprints. It was the house that we've been building for 20 years in Florida. Not a, not a house that we're building, but one that we've been working on and building and we were a spiritual house. The thing was about this house, it was three stories, but you only saw one. Because there were two stories down deep and underneath that was habitable, but you couldn't see them. See, this is why the forerunner anointing is misunderstood. Because while you're moving things out of the way and shifting things, and everybody else is having a seeker-friendly church and making everybody happy and touching everybody's feelings or devils or whatever they may have. All of a sudden, there's forerunners. They're digging down deep. Well, what are they doing? They're digging down deep. I don't see them doing anything. That's because you're not seeing with the eyes of the Spirit. You're seeing with the natural. And this angel began taking us down into the house took us down to the first floor, and we began giving our approval. The house was only two-thirds way complete. And we began giving our approval as we went along. The angel would show us this and show us this and show us this and show us this. And we'd come up into the second level. The angel would show us this. And then we got to the only level that could be seen. That was the third level. Remember, there are three heavens. Or the Paul talks about three heavens. I think there's more. But Paul talks about three heavens. We come up to the top and there's the top level. Very beautiful, but not complete. So what that means is, is that since it's not complete, we're still working not to build a local church, but to build a kingdom within the state of Florida. And all KGWC is, is a vehicle to do that. It's not anything in and of itself. It's, we're not trying to be big. We're not trying to, to, to be the, the ice cream at the top of the cake. Amen. Not even be the cake. Bulldozer anointing goes down deep. And there's more to the dream. But the second half of the dream, the first half of the dream was what we built in Florida. The second half of the dream had to do with a time that I was going to the Native Americans in 2014-15, I think, or 13-14-15. But you see, when you're preparing a way, all of a sudden, bam, the Lord comes to the temple. Now, isn't it amazing how, how many of you have gone up and down Pineda over here and then for the last year complained about the rough road and the turns and stuff like that? All of a sudden now, you don't have to wait on the trains anymore. Now the road goes over the train track, and they're not done with it yet. But now you see something that the wise master builder saw long before it was finished. You see, God has called me to be what Paul was in 1 Corinthians 3, 18, I think it is. Or let me see. 1 Corinthians uh, da, la, 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 3, 10. He said, by the grace given to me, I have been given the ability to be a wise master builder. I have blueprints <clears throat> that most people don't know about. 
And only those who have a forerunner anointing can literally interpret these blueprints. Hello. See, the thing about a forerunner anointing, if you run with a forerunner, you've got to be patient. Say patient. Because things don't go up overnight. They don't happen overnight. Now, another year from now, maybe less, this place on Panita, it'll be all manicured and groomed. All the rough places will be smoothed out, just like Isaiah 40 talks about. And you'll say, oh, man, this was so nice. But you cursed it in the beginning when you didn't realize because you couldn't see the blueprint, you put your little witchcraft Christian curses on it. Because you couldn't see properly. Because you've been looking around at everything else. I wish they wasn't doing this. Why are they doing this to this highway over here? Then all of a sudden, man, the blessing is there. I am so blessed. Aren't you glad that those forerunners over there didn't listen to you and I? I'm so glad this forerunner here is not going to listen to the word curses, the gripes, and complaints of God's people. I can handle the world. It's the gripe and complaints of God's people that damages the work of the Lord today. It's not the world. I know where the world stands. But many of the Christians today, they have double standards. They bless out of one side and curse out of the other side. Come on, somebody. Woo! Look with me in Isaiah 40 now. <clears throat> Isaiah 40, beginning in verse 3. A voice is calling, clear the way of the Lord in the wilderness. I hear the bulldozer anointing. I hear that diesel motor on the bulldozer revving up. Putting it in low and letting it go. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. In other words, get your rejection out of the way. Get your pity party out of the way. Get your woe is me out of the way. Get your word curses out of the way. Because God is preparing a way. He's going to come. We want him to come in our generation. Hallelujah. It says, make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley will be lifted up and every mountain and hill will be made low. And to let the rough ground become a plain and the rugged terrain a broad valley. Here's why, verse 5. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh will see it together. There's coming a day here on the Space Coast and all across Florida that all of a sudden the glory of God is going to show up. And, that, and people are going to say, where did that come from? That came from over a hundred years of forerunner preparing the way. You didn't know what they were doing. You thought they were crazy. You misunderstood them. But they were preparing the way of the Lord. They had their bulldozer down and low and they were letting it go and moving trees and moving stumps and building a highway for our God. All of a sudden, the Lord whom you seek, bam, comes to the temple. <clears throat> oh, this is such a... Uh, what kind of word? Thank you. It, is, it does have some fire on it. You see, forerunners are misunderstood. They're rejected because the trail that they're blazing is misunderstood. What stirred me today to this was similar to what stirred me 10 days ago with Bishop Merton Clark. Apostle Chasden Strickland wrote something and put it on Facebook, and I read it just before I came to church. I had my message already. Cheryl asked me yesterday, what are you going to preach? I said, well, I guess I'm going to pull that message out I didn't preach last week when I preached All Rise. And then I read this. We were at his church on Sunday. 
less than what we had, had less people than what we have here and a third of the people that were there came from the different outlying area because I was there walked in there and and the people were falling all over themselves to greet me do they do you the same way Tangi I mean and just oh man they, they made you feel so warm like you were the most important person on the planet and they get in there and <clears throat> They start the worship up, and there's no worship leader. And I'm trying to find the worship leader, and I, I figure, this must be a soundtrack. So I go over to Daniel, and I said, Daniel, would you find out what soundtrack they're using? Because <clears throat> they're not using a white folk soundtrack. <laughs> These are black people. They're using black folk soundtrack. And I was being stirred. It was very anointed. And finally, in just one of my glances across the room, I saw this little girl over in the corner. She wasn't even out front. She was one of those nameless, faceless people that was lighting up the atmosphere. There was nothing melancholy about her, nothing that was, uh, now I lay me down to sleep. She was preparing a way in the atmosphere. She was opening up the heavens. I said, Daniel, can you get us that soundtrack? Yeah, I'll check on it, Papa. And then all of a sudden, I see this little girl over in the corner, a little old bitty thing, ain't big as a minute. I bet you she doesn't weigh 110 pounds. Tearing the heavens open, on fire. She doesn't lit, is right. None of her words fall to the ground. There's not a spirit of fear on her. She has allowed perfect love to cast out all fear. And I look at her, Cheryl, and I said, there she is right there. There she is right there. I mean, this thing drove all the way from St. Pete. She's going to be driving here every Sunday. She's going to be driving here on Friday night. We, Tans, you better teach us how to be black. Because some of these white folks are not going to be able to handle this, but I'm bringing her anyway. We're going we're gonna to turn the bulldozer loose on her. Let her run, ride the bulldozer through here. We may get rid of a few more. <clears throat> this is what Chasm wrote. Oh, and by the way, Preaching there was just like opening the spigot in me, and it just gushed out. There was no, uh, uh, the atmosphere was already ready. I mean, my Lord, when we got there, they were going, Shandalaba konda satah. They were not afraid. The intercessors were in intercession. They were not afraid. Shandalaba konda yonda. Shh, we're in a white church now. Shh. Now, even though it's Pentecostal, we don't, we don't do it loud like that. Shh. They were going at it. Walked in there, and I said, my Lord, that I don't have to do anything but open my mouth, and Jesus is going to come out. And this is what Chasden wrote today, and I'm telling you, it shook me to the core. When you are a forerunner, the impact and fruit of your life is hard to measure. People will often miss how remarkable the infant stages of what you are doing is by comparing it to what already exists. Hello. They don't have prophetic foresight. You will hear mocking and see people waiting for you to fail. You test the narrow-minded and offend people that are stuck in their ways. People will misunderstand you and walk away from you because they're looking for an already established road. You're called to uncharted territories. There is no terminology for you yet, but know this. In the future, generations will glean from what you do now. A forerunner is called to have a greater impact on the future than the present. Chasden Strickland.
This guy's not but 32 years old. And when I read this, I'm, I'm thinking, this guy is so far ahead of where I was at 32. I wouldn't, didn't even know I was a forerunner at 32. I was just trying to be a little old bitty pastor and was like a, a duck out of water. Because I already was an apostolic leader, but didn't know it. And so you get on that bulldoze and you begin preparing the way of the Lord. And then all of a sudden the glory of God comes in. And everybody says, ah, the glory's here. There have been people fighting for it, digging for it, pushing the bulldozer for a hundred years. The suddenly that just came, it didn't come suddenly. It was suddenly when it got here, but it actually came over a hundred years. I had a guy prophesy to me down in Lake Worth, Florida several years back. I'd never heard of this before. He said, God has been working for a thousand years to get you here. He's been working that long to get me here. I'm going to share a story with you, and I'm, but I'm going to end it good, okay? I'm going to end it good. First part doesn't start out well. But years ago, I wanted to come into this region, and there was a church over in Coco called Friday Road Worship Center that had invited me to come. And so I started trying to get a worship team over in this area, and the former pastor from here shut me down. Would not allow me to have a worship team. The one who passed away, Larry Booth. Now this story is going to end good. But it needs to be told because you need to see the spirit that's in this region. He shut me down. And he calls me on the phone and he says this, these words to me. He said, you can't come in to my region unless you come through me. And he ticked me off. So I said, watch me. And I did. I wanted to get a worship team from here in this region. But it didn't happen. Now, let me take you five years after that and tell you that he called me and apologized. And he said, I did not understand your forerunner anointing. Now, the reason I brought that, and, and I can feel the demons in here shaking right now. The reason I brought this up is this is the kind of spirit you deal with in this region. You deal with this spirit that doesn't want the forerunner here. It wants the tick of my ear anointing. Mamby Pamby is right. But we have to dig deep. And so we're going to continue to dig. And by the way, uh, Larry and I made everything good. Everything. And, and to his credit, he took the initiative to call me and say, I apologize. Please forgive me. But it's a spirit that's been in this region for many generations. Spirit of church splits. Spirit that... Spirit of Korah. You ever looked at the Spirit of Korah? Go and read your Bible. Spirit of Korah came to Moses and said, You take too much on you. He said, We can hear from God as well as you can. That's what Korah, the sons of Korah, said. And there was a justice that came to them for saying that because God had picked Moses to lead and to take the bulldozer and take them to Canaan land. And so Korah and them said, hey, we can do this. You're not the only one that's anointed. Well, you know, that's true. But it's not for you to say it. It's just like somebody saying, you know that scripture that says, touch not the hair on the head of God's anointed? And they can't really say that about Kevin and I or Wendell. But you can never say that about yourself. Somebody else can say that for you but you can't say that for yourself because if you do you're taking your own justice into your own hands it's what you're doing you have to let somebody else say that not you they shouldn't have done me like that don't they know the scriptures you don't touch the hair on the head of God's anointed well they did mine yeah 
Yeah. But you can't say that. It's not for you to say. Whenever you get persecuted, you just have to suck it up and get over it. And get on your bulldozer and keep going. Amen. You can't just say, hey, I'm going to quit now. Everybody's disliking me. You can't do that. You can, it, you, well, they don't want me here. You can't say that. You can't do that. You have to keep that bulldozer in gear. See, I knew when God told me to come to uh, Coco that I was supposed to come. I just had to put the bulldozer into gear and make it happen. Hello. All right. Let's dig deep. Go to Matthew 7. Verse 24, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and burst against that house. And yet it did not fall for it had been founded upon the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act upon them will be like a foolish man who built the house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and burst against that house and it fell and great was its fall so you had one that built it on sand this is the, the <clears throat> help me God. one who built it on sand is all those who get real excited and all of a sudden when the when the winds come and the waves come they're out those who dig down deep into this right here and know him know his character know how he acts know how he operates they dig down deep and when the wind comes and when the waves come and the wind blows against the house it doesn't fall because it's not founded on their personality it's founded on the Word of God and many ministries and many Christian lives are built on personality amen and when it's built on personality it will crumble at some point we have to build our lives upon the rock not our personality and listen to this many times I wrote this today many times when you don't want to do something that you're right on the edge and saying I don't want to do this Sometimes it's a good indication that that's what God wants you to do. Paul put it like this in Romans 7. He said, the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. And the things that I should be doing, I do not do. And he went on to say, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And then he, if you read it in the Greek, it says, oh, thank God Jesus Christ will deliver me. And there's times that I, I don't, I don't want to go shopping with Cheryl. That's her ministry. I don't want to take her ministry away from her. But I did this past week. I went shopping with her. And I prayed in tongues the whole time. Shandala Baka. That's the only way I made it through. See, she has that anointing to shop. Now, the only place I can go and stay a while is Bass Pro Shop, Academy, Sports. Occasionally, if they have a lot to eat at Sam's at the little stations, I can go there and stay a little while. But shopping, mm mm. But I did this past week because I knew that a part of me had to say, hey, I want to be a blessing to her. Not just money wise, but in present, presence wise. So I watched her try on. All the, uh, most fitting rooms were closed, but she found one that was open. When I watched her try on these things, she comes out, oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. No, mm -mm. And I will tell her when I don't like something. I say, no, take that off. That's not you. Yep, I like that. 
man, did I make the brownie points. <laughs> but I didn't want to. My, the, the soulish part of Ken didn't want to go shopping, and I still don't want to go shopping. But I did that because I knew I need to be a ministry to her. And so that which I didn't want to do, I found myself. I better do this because this is right. Good work. Good work. So we dig down deep. And what we're doing right now here in Florida at Kingdom Gate, we're digging deep. We're digging a deep foundation. We're putting this thing in low and letting it go. And it doesn't look pretty, but it, it's, there's things happening in the spirit you don't see. Maybe you're not seeing the blueprint. You don't see the blueprint of what's going on because you're not looking with the eyes of the forerunner. You see, it, forerunners break, break the complacency off of their lives, the lethargy, complacency, the, the, the thing that tries to keep them from going forward. They break that off and they begin moving forward because they're called to be a forerunner. They're called to prepare a way. And many times that way is lonely because there's nobody out there with you. Woo! One more scripture and then I'll bring it to a close. In Mark chapter 4. We're going to talk about sowing the word. Because this right here is what the forerunner does. The forerunner is a person who operates man or woman by the word of God. Verse 14, the sower sows the word. And these are the ones who are, so, who are by, beside the road where the word is sown. And when they hear immediately, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. In a similar way, these are the ones on whom seed was sown in the rocky places. Who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no firm root in themselves, but are only temporary. Then when affliction or persecution arises for the word, because of the word, immediately they fall away. And you see this a lot today. Because the word is sown, but then there's no root within the individual. And so when, whenever persecution, affliction arises, they immediately blame it on the church that they're going to. And they go somewhere else. Only to find out they repeat the thing down the road. And other ones are the ones whom seem was sown among the thorns. These are, these are the ones who have heard the word and the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. And these are the ones whom seed was sown on good soil and they hear the word and accept it. And bear fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. When you're a forerunner, you sow seeds in every, all different kind of areas. Because you're forerunner. You don't know whether it's going to come up or not. So you just sow in seed as you're going along. You're decreeing the word. You're sowing seed. And this seed falls by the wayside. And it gets eaten up by the birds. This seed right here is getting taken by thorns. And this seed over here doesn't have any root in themselves. But then all of a sudden, seed is sown on good ground. And now all of a sudden, they begin to produce 30, 60, 100-fold return. Those are the marks of the forerunner. They will sow everywhere, and they will continue to sow. And then finally, they'll hit good ground. They'll reap that harvest, and they'll go sow again. Amen? All right. Hallelujah. I'm doing good. So the bulldozer anointing is the anointing that is here. It's an anointing that digs deep. It's an anointing that is a wise master build. I want to look at this scripture, 1 Corinthians 3.10. And then I'll bring it into one of my many closings. <clears throat> Here's Paul. He's, he's, he's speaking now about the forerunner gift that is in him, the builder gift. And it says, according to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder. I laid a foundation, and another is building upon it. But let each man be careful how he builds upon it. 
what we're doing here, y'all, is laying a foundation. Everybody's not going to go with us. Some are going to come, and they're not going to stay because we are forerunners. Say forerunners. And so you'll see that happening. But at some point, we're going to hit a place where all of a sudden, the Lord whom you seek has come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. And so I hope everybody here makes it into the forerunner thing with us because we're going to see awakening come to Florida. But if you don't, I'm okay with that too. I won't be a bit hurt if you decide I can't make it here because I've got my bulldozer running now. Before I was trying to be somebody I wasn't. And so I hope all of us make it into the awakening. I'm going to rewrite the book left behind it's not going to be about the rapture either it's going to be about the move of God that's in the earth today and how that some are being left behind because they do not see the blueprint stand to your feet Michaela come on up here didn't you enjoy Michaela tonight I've been trying to get Mason to bring his bass and play along with her so y'all put a little peer pressure upon him if you would before they leave tonight Hallelujah. Lord, we will not back down. We don't care what anyone says. We will not back down. We will move forward. We will decree of a day that you come, Lord, in power and might. Yes, Lord. You're preparing a way through us, Father. And I decree upon this space coast, a way is prepared. A way is prepared in the name of Yeshua. I just decree that every valley is exalted, every mountain is brought low. Every rough place is made smooth and every cro crooked place is made straight. I decree, Father, that in the state of Florida, upon the Space Coast, you're coming. You're coming. You're coming in authority, you're coming in power, you're coming in might. <coughs> Father, I thank you. That we will be prepared at your coming. We will be prepared when awakening revival comes. We will be prepared, Lord, when all of a sudden the first healing takes place in the healing room. The first miracle of someone walking. We will be prepared when revival breaks out on a street corner in Brevard County. We will go and steward it along with others. Lord, we will be prepared because we know that you're coming. You prophesied through your servant Chuck Pierce that there's a coastal awakening on both coasts of Florida. I see the blueprint of that, Lord. I see that wind blowing even before it gets here. I see that backbone in this state. Not looking, Lord, to the enemy. Not looking at the snake. I'm looking at the backbone that you have created in Florida. Come, Lord. Come and have your will. Come and have your way. And Father, we just thank you for doing it tonight in the name of Yeshua. We give you praise for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Everybody 